And then I'm just going to chuckle at it. Does anyone have a question? I have a question, Stuart. It's Chris. Yes, Chris. Uh, Stuart, in your book, Moving On, I was reading a wonderful thing, which is one must learn to uh, generously love uh, and give unconditionally. And the converse, one must learn to receive unconditionally. And I find it a lot easier to give than to receive. It's just, I'm wondering if you would talk about that, please. Well, you know, it, it's just common sense, Chris. If you can't receive, what do you have to give? Mm -hmm. You give from your ego. You give from, you know, a part of you that is not in a state of surrender. Uh -huh. Because you don't receive. you got to receive, you know, in order to give. And the whole point of this is receiving. I mean, look, here's a story with Rudy. Everything comes back to stories with Rudy. I remember I was living in North Africa, you know, in, in Marrakesh. I lived there for about three, four months when I was younger. And I bought this wonderful burnous, you know, kind of rust orange. It was very nice. And I brought it back to New York and I gave it to Rudy, you know, out of a gratitude for what he was doing to my life, you know, for my life. And a couple of years later, one day in Big India, a friend of mine comes out, my God, you can't believe this gift that Rudy gave me. And it was that Bernus. And it really meant that I had to let go. You understand? I, you can't control what you give. You got to give unconditionally. Once you give it, it's like giving birth to a child. You know, you have to love and love the child, but unconditionally. So one day that child goes out and has his own or her own remarkable life. You know, it's the same thing with receiving. If you can't receive, I mean, how do you learn anything? You're stuck in your own gift, in your own knowledge, your own what you think you are and aren't, and you give from ego. You don't give from a real depth inside that has to do with surrender. So giving and receiving, it's like yin and yang. I mean, they truly are married to each other. And you give the way you receive. You know, if you can't receive unconditionally, you're not going to be able to give unconditionally. These two things work together. And I think that this is a really major thing that all of us have to learn. Yeah. I mean, people are do-gooders and givers and givers and eventually... Their whole lives are drained out of them giving and they can't receive. You know, the earth got to receive water in order for plants to grow. I mean, look what's going on in the west of the United States. There's no rain and the whole freaking country is drying up. You got to receive in order to produce and give. This work is the same way. If you don't unconditionally open and surrender in yourself, and receive the teachings and receive the shakti of this meditation, you know, uh, you'll never be able to grow with it. And it'll never produce anything of any kind of, you know, sacred nature inside a human being unless they unconditionally open to receive what is being given. So these two things are essential to each other. They can't, one really in a deep way can't exist without the other. And if you think that by being a do-gooder, you know, certainly better than being a bad-gooder, a doer, you know, <laughs> but by being a do-gooder, you're gonna, it's, you're just spending your ego, your energy, your, and it's like healers, you know, you understand? Unless they can receive spiritual energy and they can burn up the poison they get from other people, that poison will destroy them. <laughs> Yeah. So it's all about unconditional giving and unconditional receiving. And it's not about being cynical and skeptical and, you know, it's learning to listen to life, to receive what life has to teach. And if you're all full of yourself, 
and your own self-importance and who you think you are, and what, you can never get anything. You know, you're just kind of a caricature of a human being walking around giving. I mean, it's like philanthropy is a lot of bullshit, you know? <laughs> I, I mean it. It's just people getting their names on buildings and tax write-offs and you know, that's what it's all about. And I know about that because I used to deal with those people when I was in the art business. I would sell things to people and they would donate them to museums and they would get huge tax write-offs, you know? But it had nothing to do with unconditional giving, giving because they want the museum to be a better place. Okay. They give because it, it really develops their self-importance who they are, you know? May I ask, in, in addition to that, Stuart, do you think that if you feel like you don't deserve to, to receive, that lack of self-worth is a, well, just ego too? It's fear, it's insecurity, it's ego, it's you trying to kill yourself. Yeah. Being unworthy to receive what God has to teach you is you trying to kill yourself. It's like suicide. Mm -hmm. You become a drained person. Mm -hmm. You're giving everything away and you can't receive because you're not worthy inside. So it's like a form of suicide, you know? It's a form of killing yourself. But it's long distance suicide. You know? It could take years for you to drain yourself dry before you're like a, you know, a flayed tiger or something. Tigers, you know flayed image of yourself. So all of these things work together to receive, you gotta be worthy of, of rece receiving and not an ego worth, you know, you understand it has to come from gratitude in the heart, yeah. openness, love, you know, a willingness to serve God in the world, not to serve your ego. You know, and then one gives, and I'm telling you, when you learn how to give that way, it just comes back and it's like waterfalls, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, you can't believe how it comes back. I've seen it in my own life, how it returns when, you know, when I invest that energy, money, time, this, that, in, in giving and serving God, it always comes back. And usually 10 times the amount comes back. And then you got to learn to give that away. <laughs> That's really beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I mean, this is really an important subject, Chris. I mean, when it comes to money and stuff like that, you can really tell the depth of a human being based upon their, you know, the way they deal with money. I mean it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when it's fear and insecurity and tightness about giving and getting, it's, you know, you can see that it's just the chemistry of a person that's so tight inside that they're clinging to this stuff. And, you know, and there isn't that joy of giving, you know, that joy of, and then there's room for it to be replaced and it always is. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I mean, in order for me to do these classes, I have to be open to receive the love that I feel coming from all of you. And if I'm not open to that, these classes are not going to work. The joy of seeing people grow because Shakti is being transmitted. The worthiness in people to receive Shakti, to receive that energy of God, so they can grow and develop a life that gets them closer to spiritual enlightenment. It's essential. And my reception of 
the need inside of everyone sitting in this class is really a very important element in why this class works. To be able to receive that and being willing to serve that, not to serve the ego in people and to serve personality and all that bullshit, you know, but to, to serve that need in people and the willingness for people to make the effort to grow. I couldn't think of any greater thing to do in my day, frankly. And it takes away from nothing, you know, it, it just it makes everything better. It really does, I mean, you know. And you know, look, I'm not a kid anymore and I, I can't run around building empires anymore. <laughs> I've done that in my life. I don't want to do it anymore. You know, it's different now. It's simpler and I, I, I'm enjoying it being simpler. But the empires I want to build are not, you know, architectural structures and ashram. It's the empire, it's the chakra system that's in every single person that attends this meditation. That I can be part and parcel of them developing that empire, which is themselves and their connection with God. I think it took me many years to learn that and to stop having to prove myself by building all these things, and, you know, <laughs> stop building everything, you know? And then it comes, everything comes, you know? But what could be better than to help another human being build their connection with God? I'm so grateful to do this. And when I see all of you here, understand, I receive that gratitude from all of you and it makes me really want to serve people. Not people, but the Godhead in people. You know, it's people, you know, in their personality, or you never know from day to day what they're gonna do. It always shocks me a little bit, you know. Oh my God, it's people. People, remember that movie Singing in the Rain? People, <laughs> where I forget that line. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful actress who said that line. <laughs> People. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? <laughs> really um, resonating, Stuart, with what you're talking about, giving and receiving is really powerful. Could you just share like a few more examples of like the measure of how I, a person would know they're receiving in that way and giving from there rather than ego? Yeah, you know, if you give something, look, I spent nine years of my life building an ashram in Denton, Texas. Nine years. And I recognized that a cycle, I mean, that house, the Japanese garden, everything there, I, you know, was, was my vision. And at one point I realized, Stuart, your cycle here is finished. It's finished. You have to move on in your life. So I gave it away. I realized if I would have stayed there, it would have really not allowed me to grow and become uh, the human being I've become in my life. I gave it away. And this was a big gift. You know, I could have stayed there today. I'd probably be worth $300 million if I stayed in that place of all the things I had going on, you know? And I knew that wasn't the path of my life. I, I, I heard God's voice tell me, Stuart, you know, you need to move on. You can't be attached to this. And I moved on and I went to New York and within six months, it was just this flowering situation going. It was extraordinary. What came in return? 
you know, within a couple of years, I had 150 people studying with me there. I had ashrams all over the United States and Europe. I was going to in South America. I mean, it was unbelievable. What replaced Denton, Texas? And I gave it, you know, all right, with gratitude, you know, well, somebody else can use it to build their life. So that's, you know, giving is not being attached to what you have, it's giving it unconditionally. It's giving unconditionally. And being able to open to see what the next cycle of life brings. And then receiving is the same thing. And in, in the midst of doing all this, you have to simply work your ass off because otherwise, and I don't mean, you know, I mean, internally, you have to truly build a system that gets you strong enough to do what I'm talking about. You know, and trust, you trust in God. You know, I always said the only security in life is God. Everything else is transient. It all comes and goes and you never know, you know, from day to day, it's all Maya. And in my own world, I would much rather be connected to what's infinite and permanent than put my faith in Maya, you know, in things that are just transient that come and go, and they're born, they live. I mean, look, you look at the Roman Empire, <laughs> look at the Greek Empire, look at all these places that were incredible civilizations once that they're all in ruins. You know, life has birth, it has life, and then it has moving on. And we have to develop that kind of capacity in ourselves to be able to use those cycles and not be afraid to step into the unknown. I talk about this a lot because I think it's really important. When I had a cousin who called me yesterday, I, honestly, I haven't seen him since I'm nine years old. And then he was telling me, oh my God, I see what you've done on the internet. It's unbelievable how you've lived your life. You know, and, and he would say, oh my God, I don't even know when I think of the way I've lived. I, he's talking about his own life. And it was really scary to hear him talk about his life. And I said to him, don't compare my life with yours. You know, your life is whatever it was and, and is. And, But it's an interesting thing to have somebody, I, I mean, if he walked past me on the street, I wouldn't know him, you know? But to have somebody call me and say, this is your cousin. I haven't seen you since you were nine years old. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but it's a real education about time. And to me, it just gives me a lot of gratitude that at my age, I can be doing what I'm doing. Even kind of building a little business again, you know, in Asian art, you know, which I thought I was finished with, but then it's the only way I'd earn a living. <laughs> so it came back to me. And it's kind of fun. I enjoy it, you know, buying museum quality sculptures. I mean, it's really a fun way to live. And it always comes back. Something always comes if you continue to grow in your life. That's why, you know, giving and receiving is so essential. I mean, people say, to me, well, do you earn a living doing this? Med I say, no. <laughs> I mean, I get money. People send me donations. But, you know, it's not a, you know, a living. I'm grateful when they come and I, I feel a heartfelt gratitude of people when they make donations. So I needed something else and now it's coming. Okay. 
And the incredible thing is I didn't even ask for that. They just came, you know. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? So please, you know, find that worthiness in yourself to receive. Everybody is worthy of having a wonderful life and find that worthiness inside. And all it is is simply opening your heart, becoming God's child here, finding joy, finding happiness, not being cynical about things and skeptical about things. Finding that love in yourself, the love for yourself, that you are worthy of having an incredible life. And by incredible, I mean really being full of spirit, full of higher energy, full of God. I don't mean being worth $150 billion. And then allow yourself to unconditionally receive what life has to teach you. And then unconditionally give, serve life, serve God, serve higher energy in the universe. Does anyone else have a question they would like? And if it's money you need, you know, it'll un you'll unblock yourself and it'll come. You'll learn how to do it. If it's relationships you need, if it's family you need, it'll all come if you unblock yourself and you're worthy of having these things and treating them as gifts of God, not as your possessions, but as gifts of God. It all comes. Abundance comes. Does anyone else have a question they would like? Good question, Chris. You really brought up a lot of good things. It helped me a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, if there are no more questions, then God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being in these classes. Thank you for forcing me to go to such depths in myself <laughs> that it opens up these areas of teaching and learning that I, you know, that I think to me are just amazing. I listen to them. I'm growing because of them. Without you being here, this would never happen. Demanding that. So God bless you all. Thank you. There'll be a class. What is today? Today's Wednesday, tomorrow at uh, 7.30, my time. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. And bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good evening. You too.